Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chrissy and this is A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Uh, for today's video, we're going to be putting together a unit study, uh, specifically our solar system unit study. Um, if you saw my last video, we've already covered moon phases and non-zodiac constellations. Uh, so the next part of this unit is going to be planets and NASA. So I like to plan within these worksheets that I've created for myself. Uh, usually this is hole punched and it lives in my mom planner. I like to start off with an overview of the month. Now, let me say that this is not set in stone. This is not a contract. I do like to lay out my month and lightly uh, plan out our lessons, but I am more of a logging um, homeschool educator. So what that means is that instead of daily uh, planning out a, a detailed day or lessons, I like to do a rough draft of what I want and our goals. And then I log what we have covered that day. I do like to write down a time frame. And then our homeschool routine is very much influenced by the seasons and uh, the rhythm of the year and the season. So I do like to um, also acknowledge and write down what season we're in. I chose the space unit for uh, winter because of the winter constellations and because the winter sky is one of the best times to stargaze. Just like I did for the moon phases and constellations, the spine or the base of this unit is the good and the beautiful space science curriculum. Um, and so I've gone through the book, I've marked off what lessons I do want to cover. Here I've written down more or less the days or my plan on how to cover those lessons. I also like to jot down field trips. My next step into planning is pu pulling together all the resources um, that we will be learning from. So for example, my book list, I do use the library as our main resource for books. Uh, we do own and buy some of our must-have favorite books, but our home library is very minimal. Our main books where we will be getting our information from uh, is The Solar System, and this is from Target Bullseye shows a nice picture of the planet so this is it looks minimal but it's actually packed with enough uh, information and summaries for my young children at least the next one is the space sticker activity book so we already uh, started off the first few pages just kind of an overview of what's in our universe and again, it has enough facts for the kids, um, enough engagement. We try to buy as many of these books as we can for each of our unit studies. So when I'm putting together a unit study, the first thing I'll do is hop onto a Amazon uh, and look up Nat Geo Kids sticker activity books. Highly, highly, highly recommend these. These are also perfect for on the go. And our bulk of information will be coming from the science curriculum. Again, you may have seen this already in my previous videos, space science, the wonders of the universe, the good and the beautiful curriculum, unit study for grades K through six. Um, now, I do not cover this from front to back, from cover to cover. So I go to the table of contents and I pick out which units we'd like to cover. I write them here on our monthly overview so again we want to cover lesson three the solar system and the sun and i go to page 15 and i use a these little uh, sticky notes and pen if i need it and i mark it off something else that i also like to do is i like to uh, take a look ahead at the supplies needed so for example lesson five um, we are working on a venus sensory bin so here i like to put together the supplies that i need for that ahead of time i also like to go to the um, lesson itself and cut out whatever it is i may need for that lesson so for example lesson three the solar system and the sun it wants you to assemble the mini book the sun and i found that all of the lessons that we will be covering have a mini book so i just made it into a huge uh, binder ring book
All right, so once I have our book resources down, which is where we get the most of our unit study information from, I also like to jot down resources that I have. And this is more for like shelf work and sensory bins and things of that sort. Let me show you some things that we have put together. So starting off with the Safari LTD, the solar system set. And these are marbles, planet marbles. And we'll be using these for various activities, including an object to picture match. Match. So within the good and the beautiful, they provided beautiful planet cards. And so for my younger kids, they will just, um, they enjoy matching an object to the card or to the picture. So something that you have seen sitting on our shelf for the past like two months is uh, serves as a backdrop and decor for our shelf work wall. And this is the Sarah's Silk Enchanted Play Silk uh, Starry Night. Uh, Target Bullseye, I found this shrink art ornament. Um, so you color it and then you place it in the oven and I guess shrinks down. Uh, we've never done these before, um, but hopefully they'll be fun. A solar system mobile, and this is by the brand Crayola. Also at Dollar Tree, I picked up a few of these sun catchers, one for each of my children. Uh, a Melissa and Doug, I believe this is called the Space Voyage Wood Puzzle. My children love puzzles. Another resource we already have on hand is the Space Safari LTD Space Tubes. And these are figures. You can use these for all sorts of things. Um, again, for an object to picture match. So um, maybe um, printing out three-part cards to go with each of these figurines and have the child match them. Also great for sensory bins, which is what we're using them for. Another resource that we already have is this uh, rocket pattern block mat and the pattern block pieces now these are like a hard cardboard pieces and this i pulled out of our um the good and the beautiful math k curriculum activity box um so i just thought it would be perfect to pull that and use that for this unit Okay, now stepping into the box of resources I need. Once I have pulled all the resources I have, I like to jot down some things that I feel like we're still missing. So I'm missing math activities for our shelf work. So I will browse the internet or create my own videos. Um, so within the good and the beautiful space science curriculum, they do have video suggestions uh, for you to pull up on YouTube. So I'll be writing those down here. Um, I do know already one off the top of my head, which is what I have here. And it's Storybots to Solar System. My kids love um, Storybots. And then the NASA website, like I mentioned in my last video. Next planning, we move on to arts and crafts or projects, science experiments, recipes, and field trips. Um, so I don't have a lot jotted down yet. Some of the things that you already saw, the solar system mobile, shrink art. I want to do a copy and watercolor so lesson. I like to browse the internet for any freebie downloads or printables that I can find. And again, this is for shelf work. Um, so I like to um, jot them down and jot down the website so that then I can share with you. And so that's what this box is for. And then I have a paid for downloads. If there is a printable or download that we must have and, and it costs money, I jot it down here. Usually that doesn't happen because I also like to create my own. For my downloads, my printables, I do prep those all ahead of time. Um, so to prep them, I usually need laminating sheets and I buy mine on Amazon. They have the best price. Um, of course, my laminating machine. My paper cutter is also downstairs because I've been prepping work. Um, but I usually also need a hole puncher, scissors, glue, and binder rings. So I like to prep everything ahead of time and this process usually takes me about three to four nights. So I have a DIYs uh, section here for things that I might want to save money on and DIY myself. For example, I want an orbit mat to sequence the planets in their ordinal position from the sun. So I took a wooden slab that I had laying around 
and I painted nice it. story stones. We like to use these for our sensory bins um, and for prompts for storytelling, for imaginative play. And my husband hand painted these for us. And then lastly, I do like to map out a few goals that I want out of each unit. Now we are all super moms, right? We do it all, we know it all, we want to be the best moms in the world, we want to give the kids everything, more, even if it's more than we can handle, but if there's one thing that I've learned as a homeschool educator is that you're not going to do it all. I do like to jot down a few realistic goals. So for this unit, I want them to learn and master planet names, basic planet facts, planet sequences, so again, the order ordinal position from the sun, and I want them to learn a little bit about uh, NASA and astronauts. All right, and then lastly and finally, we get to the most popular question, is how I put together shelf work. How do I come up with all these trays? How often do I rotate them? So this is my sheet for that. So I take everything, absolutely everything I have planned, the resources that we have, resources that we need, um, sensory bin, freebie downloads, DIYs that I create, and I map them all out on this page. So I have an eight cube shelf. Um, so I have eight boxes here for eight activity trays. It usually depends um, and it's usually between eight to 12 because sometimes I do add some activities to the top of the shelf, which is what I have here. Uh, and then some of them also get rotated. Some trays are simple trays. So I do find that I rotate them out within the week or two. I left this top portion blank, a long rectangular box for the top of our shelf and our wall. Um, so on our wall, I will be uh, pinning the good and the beautiful vocabulary word our wonders of the universe book and curriculum our story stones planet marbles and cards and a few books that i check out from the library and that will be the top of our shelf i'm not going to go through all of these but i do want to show you uh, some so for example for tray three i have a how to draw so it's a freebie that I found and on one side I have the how to draw a space rocket and on the other side I have how to draw an astronaut. So for this tray I have written down and I know that I will need to provide blank sheets of paper and a pencil. And we have an automatic pencil sharpener. If you don't have one, you need one. They're fun. The kids love them. So that's a tray. Another here is I have greater or less than counting cards. And these are a freebie printable from Living Montessori Now, one of my favorite Montessori uh, blogs and um, just website for resources. So here we have counting cards, just cards with numbers. And with that, there is also um, cards for subtraction, multiplication, addition, um, but we are going to be using greater or less than because that's what Bella is working at the moment. But um, of course, to make this hands-on, I am providing, I wrote down here that we are using our gemstones as manipulatives. So I know that I, on the tray, I will need to provide all the cards that she needs along with the manipulatives. And that is tray five. All right, and at the very bottom, I have two boxes for sensory bins. Um, and so for one sensory bin, we want to make moon sand. So I wrote down that I will need flour, coconut oil, and our space tubes. I also usually include some sort of scooper, a spoon, tongs, um, just something for fine motor. If you need to be more organized, I do suggest creating a few worksheets for yourself. It took me maybe 30 minutes to put this together. It's nothing fancy, it's not really that pretty, but it really does work. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this was helpful. This has been a highly requested video, so I hope to see some thumbs up. Thanks for watching and for showing us your love.